What is a dog worth? To all dog owners, no matter the sale price paid, they are priceless as they become part of the family. Working dogs can achieve higher prices if they are known to be highly skilled at their jobs, as can show dogs that have won prizes. As for their market value, once trained, or having won, that's a more difficult question to answer. And it all came to a head in a court case in the 1930s. On Thursday, 19th July 1934, a highly unusual case came before Sheriff A. Martin Lane in Kilmarnock regarding a Labrador retriever dog. The pursuer was Richard McFarlane, a gamekeeper from Low Hapton near Darville in Ayrshire, while the defender was James Auld, a hairdresser from New Mills. In early 1933, the Labrador had been bought from McFarlane by Auld. McFarlane believed the dog was worth around £20, while Auld contested this, stating that she was worth much more. McFarlane told the court he had bought the puppy for £2.10 shillings with a view to training her for fieldwork for a client. However, during her training, it became evident that she had a hard mouth rather than a soft one required for retrieving game. He claimed she damaged everything she'd retrieved, so was unsuitable for the purpose he'd hoped. He then decided to sell her to Auld, which he believed was in the March or April of 1933. Since the action had been raised, he had seen her and estimated her value at around 12 guineas. He thought £14 was too high a price for a trained female retriever, claiming prices had slumped by half over the previous four years, following the Wall Street crash in America. Mr Ingalls, the solicitor working on behalf of McFarlane, placed recent copies of a dog periodical in front of the sheriff, which showed market prices for similar dogs. These were around £10, which he pointed out to Lane. McFarlane continued that he'd instructed his solicitor to make arrangements with Auld to see about getting the dog valued independently. A week before the case was heard, on 10th July she was put on view for an hour every night for four consecutive nights. McFarlane, accompanied by Mr Reith from Dalrymple, a well-known and respected dog breeder and judge at dog shows, had visited Auld at his home in New Milnes. On arrival, the men were told Auld was out. A lady at the house then showed them a Labrador retriever dog, but he claimed it was not the one in question. Unperturbed, the two men headed to Auld's shop, where they found him and Reith spotted another dog of the same breed. This was the dog in question, as he knew her well. She had been shown at Galston, Catron and Ayr. As she was a show dog, he valued her at about 15 guineas, but had known of dogs like her being bought for as much as £600. Earlier in that year, Auld's Labrador had won at the Stirlingshire Canine Society show in Falkirk, taking the Labrador Retriever Novice title. Auld's solicitor was Mr Rorison, who asked Reith if he would have raised his valuation if he'd known she had won about £100 in prize money. But he retorted that he would have been surprised if she had won that much. He also told the court that he didn't know anything about the dog's capabilities on the field. Mr Ewing, a witness for the defence, then took the stand. He was a reporter for Dog World and had attended shows in Ayrshire since 1918. He had seen the dog in question at the Kilmarnock show and at Ayr. He had valued her at £40. He was then shown a number of prize-winning tickets, 
but he told the court it was impossible to know the amount of prize money won. He also said he found it hard to believe the dog was a hard-mouthed one, as claimed, but that it depended on the temperament of the dog. The secretary of the Kilmarnock Canine Club, James Guthrie, was also asked about how much he thought the dog was worth. He concluded £35. Ald then entered the witness box. He told the court that he had had the dog for 18 months, and during that time she had won prize money amounting to £100. In April 1934, she had made £7 in one week. He went on, When I bought the dog from Mr McFarlane, he told me that it would turn out to be a good worker. He said that she was eight months old when he got her, and wasn't told anything about her having a hard mouth. In fact, he said, he'd not heard that until that morning in court. He was then asked how much value he would place on his dog and replied, I wouldn't sell it for a hundred pounds. He was then asked, Do you think that the suggestion she is not worth twenty pounds is a right one? He replied, No. Rodison then asked how he'd paid for her, he had given McFarlane a spaniel for her. It was a straightforward swap, with no money changing hands. In replying to Mr Ingalls, he told the court he thought the market value for his dog was somewhere between 70 and and £100. Pounds. Asked if he'd had offers, he replied yes, but had turned them all down. Ingalls pointed out that the prize money cards had nothing written on them to identify the winner, which Ald conceded. Another witness in the case, Hugh Shields, who had over 40 years' experience with dogs, was also asked to value the Labrador. He reckoned she was worth around £50. He went on to explain that he had shown the dog on behalf of Ald on several occasions and had twice been offered £25 and £30 for her. In his closing address, the sheriff said the case had presented a difficult problem. He referred to the distinct conflict of evidence and that the experts, or so-called experts on both sides, cancelled each other out. He said that as in the cattle and horse markets, large sums of money can be paid for any animal but that this case did not follow the usual rules. He went on that the best way to get a valuation for her would have been to have her publicly auctioned, as that would have satisfied the court. That not being the case, his attention turned to the market prices available. He told the court that he had no doubt that Ald really did believe his dog was worth a hundred pounds, but that is where sentiment comes in. He went on, I have a cocker spaniel, and I did not pay anything like a hundred pounds for it, but I would not sell it for a hundred pounds. He said it was the market value that mattered in this case. As for the prize-winning tickets, Lane wasn't satisfied with them as evidence towards the dog's value. In conclusion, the sheriff declared that, in his opinion, the Labrador couldn't be valued at any more than £20 on the open market, and as a result, the dispute should go to the small claims court. The case was settled, and Ald went on to show his Labrador all over the country, winning many prizes. <laughs>